Brian Mick with Ridgeline Manufacturing, and I'd like to show you today our structure of our utility trailers. Uh, the trailers usually they get covered with a decking surface, and really what you want to be able to see is what the frame is made out of. And here at Ridgeline, uh, we build a line of utility trailers. Uh, we start out with our smallest being a six and a half uh, by ten and then we build them up to uh, 14 foot, 16 foot, 18 foot tandem axle trailers. Uh, but the one I'm standing here by today is uh, a frame of one of our 14 foot uh, utility trailers. Uh, the width of all of our trailers are 76 and a half inches wide to the inside and then obviously your lengths being the uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, so on and so forth. Uh, but what I wanted to share with you uh, people today is structurally how we build the trailer. Uh, here at Ridgeline, our trailer is 100% made out of tubular construction. Uh, we utilize a 2x3 tube on the bottom, and then as well, all of our cross members are run every two feet, and they're also a box tube. Uh, you cannot beat the strength of a box tube. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers are uh, cutting costs by using angle iron or else they're using like a channel iron. Uh, some of them use what they call a hat channel. Uh, some will try to make you believe that an I-beam is a stronger uh, material shape than a tube. Uh, but common sense is that with four sides supporting this box is going to be a lot stronger than two or three. Okay, uh, So very rare to see that in the industry. 100% uh, tube constructed trailer, uh, especially in the aluminum arena. Uh, another thing that is nice about the tube is it allows for us to put most of the wiring down that tube to keep it protected from the road elements. Uh, we also do use uh, all LED lighting. Uh, we use the flush mounted grommet style, uh, the two inch round, uh, where we're not cheating there and giving you the little LED one in, uh, half inch round button lights. Uh, these are going to be very bright and people are going to see you. Uh, another thing that I like to point out is that we utilize a torsion suspension. Uh, all our trailers from our 10 foot up to our biggest tandem axles, we are using a 3500 brand name Lippert torsion axle suspension. Most of the competitive brands out there are using uh, leaf spring suspension. Uh, they're going to try to convince you that a torsion axle suspension is not better. Really what they're telling you is we also build steel trailers and in the steel arena they use a lot of leaf spring suspensions. The advantages to a torsion axle suspension is it works off of rubber. Okay, On the inside of the axle there is rubber that is in there on all four corners. Trevor, if you want to come over here and just kind of zoom in on the back of this axle uh, so they can kind of see the things I'm going to point out. Uh, so on the corners here, all four, they run rubber inside of there and that's how each wheel works and they work independently from each other which a leaf spring axle is not going to give you that competitive advantage. With the independent suspension, it's going to give you a lot nicer ride. Uh, another nice thing about a torsion axle is that it acts as another solid beam cross member where with the actuating leaf springs in between, it's not acting as a, a strength item to your trailer where a torsion axle is, okay? So torsion axles have been around for years and years and years. They're very heavily used in the recreational industry in aluminum trailers because it is a better axle system. Uh, they also backed them with a five-year warranty. Uh, you're not going to get that type of warranty on a leaf spring suspension. Um, all of ours uh, do come with an easy lube hub system. You pull the cap off, there's a grease herc in there, so you can easily grease your bearings without having to tear everything apart. Um, nice beefy fender, all aluminum tread bright. Uh, you can literally get up on our trailer here and you can literally stand on top of this fender. Most of the companies you did that, you're going to be standing on the ground. Okay, a lot of people like to step on the fenders to get into the trailer. 
Uh, another thing I'd like to point out is that on all the Ridgeline trailers, we utilize a truss design to give you a cargo rack. So with every trailer that we manufacture, it's kind of a hybrid, it's not a solid side, but yet it's not an open side either. Ten and a half inches for a lot of you folks that have side-by-sides with doors and cabs, it's the proper height you're going to be able to get your doors open. So that's one thing you need to look for when you're looking at utility trailers if you own a side-by-side -side with a cab of doors. Okay. Uh, with the truss design tied into this 2x3, this is 13 and a half inches of beam strength. This is going to be way stronger than any other company's trailer that's maybe utilizing an angle iron. Maybe they're just using a short uh, rail side. This is going to be superior in strength and it's also very user friendly for hauling your cargo. But one of the biggest advantages about our side, people, is this is a channel iron here that's a quarter inch thick piece of channel. This is where you can tie your cargo down with ratchet straps. Not too many people are going to use rope anymore. Uh, for an uh, effective uh, way of securing your cargo, you can hook hooks to this uh, with your ratchet straps and you can crank on them and you're not going to bend this channel. A very nice feature with the Ridgeline trailer. It's infinite along the whole side, plus you've got the width here. Okay, uh, Trevor, you come over here. I want to show them another thing here. Uh, it's in the corner of all our trailers. We tie in our cross member in the front and the side as well as in the rear. We weld this gusset plate here. Okay, that's going to add a lot of strength here. If you look right here, you can see we're running an A-frame tongue design, not just a straight pull. Uh, so we're going to have two members there giving you a stronger tongue. All our units do come with a tongue jack. Of course, they come with the safety chain, two-inch coupler. Uh, the uh, trailer, as you see on this one, we have the upgrade to the aluminum mag wheels. Uh, we kind of like to keep uh, that as an option for the customer. We utilize a 15 inch radio tire. Most of our competitors, when you get into a 12 footer larger trailer, they want to use a 13 inch tire. Uh, where with the Ridgeline, you're getting a radio tire, not a bias, and you're going to get a 205 by 75R 15 tire. Okay, these are going to give you years and years and years of use. Uh, good tire, good structure, good lighting, uh, it's tough to beat this product. Now if you want to come over here, I want to show you on a finished unit. As you can see our ramps all fold to the floor. So when you're hauling empty and you have no cargo in this, you can literally fold your ramp to the floor to reduce that wind resistance of the ramp. Uh, on all our units standard, from a 12 foot model on up, uh, we equip with the trailer a 5 foot ramp. Just need to remove these pins here. Where a lot of the companies are going to give you in a 12 foot trailer and up like a 4 foot ramp, maybe even shorter. So not a real steep incline there to run your mower up there, to run your UTV up there, your side by side, golf cart, whatever you're utilizing the ramp for. Uh, so very user friendly, you can fold it to the, to the floor, less wind resistance. We do also offer a bifold ramp that you can add on as an optional upgrade. Uh, a little bit on the flooring, <clears throat> a lot of people will ask us, why don't you use an aluminum floor? Uh, the reason we choose to mostly is we're trying to keep the cost of the trailer to where most people see the value in the frame, uh, but yet the aluminum decking can add a lot of cost 
And really, here at Ridgeline, we feel the aluminum floors are kind of inferior. Uh, yes, we understand they're never going to rot. Uh, but to keep the cost effective, most of the manufacturers pushing the aluminum floors are using a very, very thin extrusion. Uh, so it's tough to point load. Uh, when I say point load, if you're running a side-by-side -side on this trailer or a mower, you don't have to worry about your tires being over a cross member. Okay, if your tire lands up in between the two feet of the cross members, you're not going to bend your decking. Uh, this is a 2x6 treated pine, so it is treated. Uh, if you talk to any lumber yard or any lumber expert, they're going to tell you that you're going to get close to 40 years of usage out of this 2x6 treated pine board. Uh, that is a very effective way also if you want to put wheel chocks down, you can screw into this 2x6 with aluminum floor. It's kind of hard to do that. Uh, another thing is that this isn't going to get as slippery when it gets icy and snowy. Uh, where the aluminum floors are very, very, very slippery. Uh, so we like to keep the value there so we can get a lot of impact by utilizing the wood instead of the aluminum floor. Uh, another thing as you can see is we do trim the rear of the trailer to protect that wood floor as well in the front we trim it and cap it. And if you notice we don't run any screws here. Okay, and the reason why you don't want any screws here is that it allows that board to move a little bit because the wood is going to move, it's going to shrink, it's going to expand. And by leaving it loose and capping it here, it allows that board to move so it doesn't split the ends of the boards. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers, they don't want to cap the front or the rear, and then what they do is they screw or nail it so it allows that board to move, and then sometimes they'll crack down the center. So we don't have to worry about that here on the Ridgeline trailer. Uh, just wanted to share this with you folks today uh, so you can literally see the frame structures and how we build them. Uh, it's tough to beat the strength of this trailer, tough to beat the look of it. Uh, this is a lifetime trailer, people. There's a tremendous amount of uses for them.